Hi. I am sitting in my steam room again, just my bathroom. As you know, I live, maybe you don't know, I live in Nevada and now it is summertime and boy oh boy did the heat come. Um, it's 100 degrees today and it's just very, very dry. I'm watching my skin just turn into a desert, ignore my dogs. And so I'm here just taking in some moisture into my lungs, into my skin, into my hair, daily maintenance. Sitting with water is super important for us. I just woke up a little while ago. I slept in, so my eyes are still puffy. But anyway, sitting with water is super important. Being with water, drinking, being properly hydrated with water and electrolytes because we aren't made of water. We are made of saline. We are just like the ocean and we need to continually re-up our saline because what happens, the, the salt is the part that conducts the electricity through the water or the plasma. The salt is needed to conduct. The, we can have, be full of water, but if we don't have any good salts and electrolytes, then we are not conducting electricity. So you can think, I'm drinking water all the time and I still feel worn out and run down. Um, <clears throat> you'll know if that's happening if you're urinating all the time. It's not, you need salt in your tissues to siphon out the water from your bloodstream and, um, and to use it in your body. So if you're just going to the bathroom constantly, then maybe you need some more salt in your tissues. And then you'll know you have enough when you get a loose stool. So there's the indicator. If you're peeing a lot, like you drink something and it just goes right through you, you need more electrolytes. If you have a loose stool, you have a little bit too much. So back off just a little and that's your happy place. And of course, depending on your elevation, I'm here at about 4,200 feet above sea level. If you're up at 8,000 feet or down at sea level, it's gonna be very different. It's gonna also be very different depending on the time of year and the normal weather, which these days normal weather isn't even normal. Um, places around the world are shifting what their normal weather is. Wet places are drying up, dry places are getting wet, cold places are getting warm, warm places are getting cool. So there's a lot of shift happening, so just pay attention to the indicators in your body. If you feel like you are running out of energy, the first thing you want to do is hydrate. If you feel like you're hungry and you're going to the refrigerator or cupboards or whatever and you're looking and you just can't figure out what you're hungry for, you're probably thirsty. So try that first. Drink some water and, and if you are truly dehydrated, you will be amazed at how much water you can drink. Try carrying around a big glass fill it up, carry it around with you, and it just makes it easy to constantly hydrate without getting, without worry, you know, counting too much. Just, you know, a few of those a day and you should be good to go. And sit with water, because when you are with water in and out of your body, whether you're sitting in a bath, taking a long shower, steam room, consuming water, and staying hydrated, um, you put your own physical body in, with the flow of the universe, you're connecting your physical and universal self. Because the universe on the physical level is water. So you wanna be in that flow, you want your energy, your vibration, your destiny to come to you and it's easier to do in the flow of water. That's what conducts electricity. And I've heard that's why people see ghosts or aberrations at night because there's more water in the air and it's easier for them to come through in a physical form. You know, whether you're seeing actual, I've, I mean, have I? I have and I haven't. I, on a very foggy night one time, I was walking from my grandmother's house to my house. She lived two blocks from us at the most, two short neighborhood blocks. And it was dark and it was foggy and the street lights were shining on the street, of course, because that's what they do. But it was foggy. And I could see, like, the past. 
I saw people walking and they were wearing sort of old time clothes. I saw someone riding by on a bike that had like the one big wheel and the one little wheel. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like, uh, I'm, I'm seeing the past and then a car drove through and it all went swirling up and disappeared. So maybe I have seen something, um, but I haven't seen like a ghost or anything like that. I have seen electronics do really strange things. Um, I'm sure that after my grandmother died, I saw an electronic device give us a very clear message, and I don't remember what it is now. And that's the thing about uh, seeing and hearing is that it's it's hard to keep that in your memory sometimes and recall it exactly what it was. So, you know, if you're really into it, have a log, some kind of uh, spiritual message diary. I do remember the main ones. There are a few times that I've had just incredible encounters that were just very audible or like in a dream that you know isn't a dream. And uh, those I'll never forget. I remember times I channeled, I remember times I heard the voice of the Lord, and I remember dreams, one in particular that is always on the top of my mind, that where I was literally being shown. And what I was shown, when I once I got into, I literally walked through a veil and I was embodying one form with my great grandmother. And when we walked through the veil, they said my name, and it was a combination of my name and her name, and that's now the name that I go by, the English version of it. And all these women walked us through, and they were showing us around this ancient um, neighborhood or encampment where it's got walls, like the baked clay walls that you can see over the tops, and all of the homes were square, baked clay homes with windows in them and they walked me around and showed me that and then took me to an area where a little bit in the distance you know maybe 50 feet from me there was a big stone circle like big rocks and then there were men I don't remember if they were standing inside or outside of that I think outside maybe it's I don't remember but the men were very uh, ancient looking Hebrew, I was assuming, because my great-grandmother was, we are of Jewish descent, and these men were standing in a circle, and they were dressed in black, and this cloud formation descended down to just kind of maybe 20 feet over their heads, and it sort of formed the shape of a mouth and started talking. And the sound of it was like thunder and friction, electricity, like I was like, whoa. And it was very intense. And I realized at that moment why it was the men who were there. And it was because it was the vibration and electricity and everything was very powerful, uh, a little scary but I was allowed to observe it for a moment to get that understanding of just to see and witness. So then they took me, these women took me into another space where it was a, one of the baked clay structures, just a little hut with a little window. And in the window, there's a, a oil lamp or candle of some sort of flame in the window. And it must have been a, like a medical or OB-GYN uh, structure specifically for that because there was a tall baked clay bed at normal like hospital bed height. And that was all that was in there. And I can't imagine anybody would want to sleep on that. It was only like as wide as a twin bed. And they laid me down on that and I proceeded to literally give birth to who I thought at the time, right after that was Moses. So I'm giving birth and right as I'm almost done giving birth, the alarm clock in the physical world goes off. It was like three something in the morning. And trust me, I hadn't set my alarm for three something in the morning. Absolutely not. 
And it, it woke me up out of this, but when I opened my eyes, I was still there. I could see here and I could see there at the same time. And I was with someone at the time. He turned the alarm off. And I tried to do all the tricks that I've heard to get back into dreams, like spin and get back into it. I couldn't get back into it. And I was very perplexed as to why that would be interrupted for me. But I later came to understand through a course of events, the guy that I had been dating for a couple of years actually was sent to disrupt me. When we met, I was in a very deep spiritual practice of ascension that I'll talk about another time. And I, I was, just to let you know, so I don't forget about it, you can remind me later if you want to hear about it, I was celibate and having a practice of spiritual alchemy all alone. And he wasn't interested in practicing spiritual alchemy, and I should have known right then that he wasn't for me, because that's what I was looking for. And through a course of synchronicities that were disruptive to that practice, I realized that he was like a demonic force. He was sent to disrupt that. And that's what I think happened, I don't think he set that alarm, I think that just his presence and his energy were making things happen to totally disrupt my ascension at the time. And that's happened since then too, where I'm in a very amazing spiritual place, and then I'll start dating someone that I think is really great and really good for me, because you know, who wants to be alone forever? And now I do, now I don't mind, I'm like, whatever. And because this is more important to me, the spiritual practice is more important to me. And so now I've really learned to look for the signs of disruption and stay away. Just cut it off, pull that plug out of my life so there's no energy flowing into my life from negative forces. And, um, oh, my voice is deep today. So that is like the one main dream, which I know wasn't a dream. I was being shown this and giving birth to, I'm not sure who it was, and uh, it was a very beautiful, powerful experience that I will never forget, and when I pass over, I will get the information and be able to know exactly what that was. So, I'm very, very blessed in that way. Last night I had some really weird dreams. Um, some dreams you know they're just your subconscious clearing out anxiety, maybe trying to give you a little information because they're so weirdly encoded. But it seems like the dreams that are actual, um, I don't want to say prophecy, but that are, are really showing you something in your spiritual space, mine have always been really clear. And I never really had to guess. I mean, it's like, why was I being shown this? But, but the whole situation was like real life and really, really clear. Um, I used to have dreams... They weren't exactly recurring dreams, it was a recurring theme, and they quit happening once I mastered that environment. And what I did is I mastered the fear. And uh, I guess I'll tell you what that was. So I used to have dreams where I was either in an airplane and I jumped out and I was really high above everything and falling and, and like jumping onto, trying to jump onto a rooftop or land right so I didn't hurt myself or I was literally going down in a plane that was going down. Once I had children, my first son, six years between the two, I would have a dream that he is in the plane with me and we're going down, and it's horrifying and totally scary. And then I had my second son, and now the two kids are with me and we're in a dream and going down. And once I learned to master that and not be afraid, I quit having the dreams. So how did I do that? I would say, um, I would say, this would never really happen. This is only a dream. Trust me, we'll wake up before anything happens. This is only a dream. And then, I think that maybe happened once or twice. I'm like, this is only a dream. This would never really happen in real life. And I quit having those dreams. So, I'm not really sure if that was like a past life parallel or just a horrible fear. Uh, but I quit having those dreams, thank goodness, because they were scary. Like I said, until I learned how just to say, this has to be a dream. And there are plenty of times where I've been in a dream, and I'm like, Duh. I think this would never really happen in real life, this has to be a dream. And 90% of the time, if not more, 
it, it is. I woke up and I was like, see, I knew it was a dream. So there's a certain element of consciousness and awareness that you can take into your dream state and arm yourself. Even in real life, if something is super weird, you can say, I just think this is probably a dream. And the reality is, it is. This life is fully a dream. It's just like that. And when you pass over, it's just like waking up and you're like, oh, I thought that was so real. And who knows how many levels of that we have, how many levels of dream we're in. It's hard to say. But I know for sure that it's just like waking up. And if you're afraid of passing over because of there might be pain or fear, trust me, there's only so much pain and only so much fear that you can embody in this reality as a human. There just, there's just only just so much. And yes, in the moment, it seems intolerable and like it will kill you, but you can only perceive up to that one level. And it's doable. I've been there. It's doable. And yes, it's scary. But in that moment, if you can remember to say, this is probably just a dream. It helps. And it probably is just a dream. And then there are those things in life that can happen where it's just a perpetual nightmare. But you can remember that when we cross over and look back, everything happens in an instant. We're just downloading in an instant. And living the moment to moment to moment is this reality. Because when we pass over, everything is all in one consciousness. It's only here that we separate it and string it out so that it seems like it's taking a lifetime. And, uh, you know, I can only guess from everything that I've been shown and all of the research that I've done that whatever it is you're experiencing is your, it's kind of like it, it is your, I, I want to say test, it is your class, like in a classroom, it is your lesson. And everything that I've been shown is that you basically choose the vibration of your experiences so that you can learn how to love and accept that vibration. And I know for sure because not only have I been shown this, I've been told this, I can sense this, but then it's becoming reaffirmed to me the more I research others <clears throat> who are connected. <clears throat> Sorry. <coughs> I'm talking too deep. I need to talk like this so it doesn't hurt my throat. So, um, unless someone has come here to take a sort of a break and have an easy life just to have the experience of what it's like <clears throat> to have a pretty easy kind of boring life because easy can be boring and that's why we come here because it's pretty boring just to be like oh my gosh I'm in heaven and everything is great what is there to do so it's just like playing a game in VR you're like yeah I'm gonna go play this game for a while and you put on your VR and it's as if you're really there so sorry my throat is getting scratchy We can tune up our voices so that we have a higher vibration in our voice. When I first wake up, my voice is, is quite deep. And one of the ways that you can um, raise the vibration of your voice is silently scream, start logo. And it gets your vocal cords up into a higher range. You can see it immediately just raise my voice up a little bit. It's also a way that you can feminize your voice. If you have a deep voice and want a higher, more feminine voice, you can do this. It just trains your muscles to be up higher. And it doesn't mean you're talking like a little girl. It just means that your vocal cords are 
operating at a, at a higher level on a, and a higher sound vibration of frequency. <clears throat> when my voice is very low and my throat gets scratchy, it might mean that I need to have a, a no talking day. Anyway, so what was I saying? Oh, so when, when, if you ever know someone who is having a very, very, very hard life, it is that, okay, someone who's having a very, very hard life and struggling with it, they chose that very difficult vibration because they wanted to ascend very quickly. And, and their struggle, you're seeing that friction, they haven't accepted yet. They haven't accepted this reality that they have injected themselves into, this vibration that they've decided to surf while they're here. Now you might also know someone who's had a very hard life or is struggling and they're in total acceptance and peace and love with it. <clears throat> Imagine those stories that you hear about a child who is born with multiple, uh, severely multiply handicapped. I used to work with severely multiply handicapped adults, but they are like children. And it can be very hard to watch and so that's a lesson for us and it can be frustrating and that's a lesson for us but there are those who come through with severely multiply handicapped existences and they're the most loving people they are the most ascended beings it's almost like they're an ascended master that came down for you or for us to learn some of the hardest lessons without existing like that, but to learn that compassion and love by witnessing another human struggling so dramatically, so incredibly, and being at peace with it. And even being at peace with knowing that they are going to pass over. <clears throat> Those are the most highly evolved beings. And there are the beings that come through and create so much struggle and chaos and are so hated in this life, in this physical form. Again, ascended masters who are like, I'll do it. I can handle it. I will do that for you. They come through and they teach us very hard lessons. And I don't mean necessarily, I mean, it can be anybody, I guess. But it seems like the, the harder the life, the more ascended that person. The more they're struggling, the more they ask for and can handle that struggle. And so sitting in judgment of them, let's say it's a, a drunk homeless person, sitting in judgment of them, that's our struggle. That's the lesson they're teaching us. If they're struggling with that, then, then they haven't come into alignment and accepted it. But if they're harmonic and you don't know why, like how can you be so happy when your life is so hard? To teach you how to be happy when your life isn't that hard. To teach you that it's just about a, a shift of perception. At all levels, it's always a matter of aligning yourself and saying, I get it. Bring it on. No matter what, I will accept this. As a matter of fact, there's a guy, super controversial guy right now, and he has been thrown in jail once, and I think it's going on twice. He's a, an influencer, and he's very, people call him misogynistic, and he's been accused of trafficking. I don't follow him, I don't know that much about him. But I saw a video of his, a short, where he said that I decided to look at going to jail, prison over this, with complete love and acceptance, knowing that if that's what the Lord wants from me, then that is for my highest good. And I completely embrace and accept that. He is hated. Tell me that's not an Ascended Master coming down into the third dimensional space to teach us something. 
and he's young. He's in his maybe early 30s. And he's very wealthy, and who knows, I don't know exactly what he's done. And maybe, if you know who I'm talking about, uh, comment, leave it in the comments. But that is, that's the spirit, <laughs> you know, acceptance for where you are. And the realization that you've created this in order to have this challenge, in order to find the alignment, <clears throat> because the more challenging it is, <laughs> the more challenging it is, the more you are raising your vibration when you align with it. Because the three-dimensional space, if you are finding that you're resonating down here because the challenges of your life, the match, if this is the baseline, the match is that much above your baseline. So the more evil we think something is, the more low resonating we think something is, the more love it's going to take to transform that into positive energy. Does that make sense? There's, they say there's fear and love. Fear and love. Okay? But yes, fear is just the, as, as, as darkness and black is the absence of light, fear is the absence of love crying out for love. Any situation that brings you fear or you see someone in where it's fearful, whether it's anxiety, depression, jealousy, envy, all of those seven deadly sins, it's a cry for love. So everything is love. It's either positive love or negative love. If it's negative love, give it some love and bring it up. Bring it up, bring it up with more and more love. And what is love? It's just the embracing and acceptance. <clears throat> it's shining the light on it and not judging what you see, not wanting it to be right or wrong, but just allowing it to be. You wanna see other kitty? Other kitties here with me again. Hi. Other kitty. Kitty, 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 kitty. Hi, other kitty. Oh, hi. Yeah, okay. So, those, woo, mm. so those feelings that are low vibration, that put you in any kind of fear, just pour more love into them. Do the rainbow vibration exercise that I taught you during the You Are A Channel video. Do that exercise to raise your vibration. And very soon, I'm going to do the whole entire exercise as your nightly meditation so that you can tune in at night and do the whole meditation. I won't put any music with it, so you can play whatever kind of relaxing music or nothing. I listen to a lot of white noise. Um, I would like to listen to the, the different, uh, what is it, solfeggio vibrations. But they always have like bings and bongs, and I wish it was just the tone. If you know of anything like that that doesn't have bings or bongs in it, it's just the tone straight through, definitely share that with me and everyone because um, I find that bings and bongs kind of uh, distract me out of it. And of course I should be like, oh, I welcome all distractions because it just makes my practice better. I'll get there. Um, <clears throat> now... A lot of the other channelers that I've seen and, and people who have had uh, become very spiritual after their near-death experiences, they talk about uh, when they're being interviewed, you know, when did you become like this? And I think it's interesting because whenever I hear that, I'm like, I was born this way. Oh, thanks, Kitty. She's got stuff all over my feet. I was born like this. And I was like this my whole life, and I really had no idea that other people weren't. How would I know? I thought everybody was coming in with the same frame of reference as me. So I would openly speak this way, and I was considered very weird. So I, I really shut it down for many years. I had some times where I really fully expressed this, and then someone would come in as a disruptor, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier. And 
now I'm coming back into it fully with a lot more uh, protection, a lot higher vibration. You know, it's like two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. It's just like with anything. If you work out real, real hard every single day, you're not building anything. You're just constantly tearing down your muscles. You've got to do a couple days and then a break. A couple days and then a break. And then you're actually building. So I don't judge the times when I have been in like a down cycle where I'm just fully human and having a hard time connecting. I accept that. And so now my approach is just more stable and steady and even so that I don't have to take more downtime. Uh, I was going at it so full bore ahead when I would learn something new or when I was like, yay, it's here again, that I would burn myself out a little bit. It's just like if you ever have Reiki, get a Reiki healer, that is real. But that Reiki healer can bring down so much energy to heal your body and raise your vibration. A good Reiki healer knows when to stop and that's just before you're burned out. If you've ever been around a high energy person and after a while you're exhausted, it's because you're burned out. As a high energy person that used to burn people out, I had to learn how my bubble operates and how to keep that super high vibration inside my bubble and just let a little bit of it out as, as necessary. And most of that comes through in the heartbeat. Like I said, go back to the rainbow exercise and you'll learn that your heartbeat actually puts out your vibration. You know, your heartbeat isn't constant. It goes out and in and out and in. That is the level at which we should share, should, I, I hate to say that, but generally speaking, that's how you share your vibration. And so if you have ever noticed, if you're having kind of a crummy day, it just keeps getting worse and worse in the way people respond to you. That's because your vibration, you're putting that out in your pulse of your, of your heartbeat. And when you raise your vibration and you're having a really great day and you put it out in your heartbeat, the world around you, you're basically raising yourself to that frequency like a radio station. And there are other radio stations there, but you're tuned into this one, so that's the music you're going to hear. Your heartbeat attracts the music of the universe that is the same, it's harmonic with it. And so do that rainbow meditation or, or exercise, and soon I will do that full length. Um, I call it a night time because it puts me to sleep, but you can really do it anytime as long as you have a little bit to sit and relax yourself fully and then go into your day. But uh, I guess that's it for now. I'm pretty much done steaming and uh, I really thank you for being with me. I hope that something that I said resonated with you and, and raises your vibration up at least just a little bit today. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You being here raises my vibration.